Today I'm really excited to show you my new 3D printed magnetic levitation device. And I want to teach you how it works and how you can make your own. It's a very simple design that does not require a microcontroller or soldering. But how is this type of levitation even possible? Well, imagine you're holding a normal sized basketball. We know that when we let go of the ball that it will fall. Huh. That's not right. Weird. Oh, wait. Make sure you have gravity turned on. Very, very important. Okay, now as the ball falls, what if I quickly grabbed it and let go over and over very quickly? It would appear as if the ball remained suspended in mid-air. Let's duplicate this effect using just two main components, a MOSFET and a hull sensor and a coil of wire, so technically there's three main components. Let me first just show you what these components can do. The MOSFET is a type of transistor that can be used to turn on an LED if a positive voltage is applied, or turn off that LED if a negative voltage is applied, like a switch. Okay cool, we've got that working. And next, the hall sensor. That can be used to turn on an LED if a magnet is close to the sensor and that same light turns off when the magnet is taken away. Well hey, I've got an idea. What if we connect these two together? Now the MOSFET's blue light will remain on unless the magnet is near the sensor turning the blue light off. So what if the blue LED was replaced with a second magnet that could turn on and off the same way a light does? But how can we have a magnet turn on and off? The answer is to use a coil of wire. There's an interesting effect that happens when electricity flows through a coil of wire. A magnetic field is created, turning this normally non-magnetic wire into a magnet, or referred to as an electromagnet. We will need a way to hold everything together, so let's 3D print the main parts. I'll provide a link to the 3D files that I made for this project that you can download in the video description. The assembly of the main body is pretty simple with the top arm sliding into the front of the battery compartment. Speaking of the batteries, let's go ahead and open up the case and put in the four AA batteries, and then close up the case. It should fit perfectly into the holder. I made a notch in the back so you can easily access the switch. Let's keep it in the off position for right now. These two pieces will fit together to hold our electromagnet. The screw at the top serves two purposes. First, it helps hold the top and bottom together, but it also helps amplify our electromagnet since it has iron in it. Now this is the fun part. We need to wind the wire around the spool, and the more windings, the stronger the magnet. I recommend creating a holder for the wire to unravel from. It makes it much easier. Insert the wire from this position and leave a few inches extended. Wind in the same direction and keep the wire tight and close together. It shouldn't take too long, but use a piece of tape to hold the wire if you need to take a break. When it looks about done, loop the wire through this hole a couple times to secure the wire. Cut it but also leave a few inches on this side too. Now that the coil is done, it should fit tightly into the top of the arm. Now I wanted to make this part as painless as possible, so you don't need any electronics experience, just follow along very closely. I decided to use a mini breadboard to hold the circuit which has connecting wire lines inside like this. Place the components exactly as shown here in this animation. Clip the legs off the resistor, but keep both ends and use as shown. Arrange everything exactly as you see. We need to add the black negative and red positive wires to the breadboard, and make sure they are secure and won't move. The magnet wire has an enamel coating that needs to be scraped off both ends of the wires. Place them in the exact same spot as shown. The wires are thin, so that is why they are wedged to stay in place. Use electrical tape to hold everything in place if needed. I designed this whole piece to move so it's easy to tune in that perfect spot for the hull sensor. I turned on the power and then it worked. Um, eh, not really. I tried again and again. And I knew everything was correct, but then I realized what the problem was. The polarity of the electromagnet was in the incorrect direction. So all I had to do was switch the wires of the coil around to the correct position. 
So this is the final correct assembly for mine to work. Move the sensor around until you find that perfect equilibrium between flying and falling, producing levitation. The magnet might want to flip over, so you can prevent that by adding a small piece of tape to the bottom. The coil of wire will start to get warm, so I don't recommend leaving this on for more than a few minutes. So make sure to turn the power switch off. I have to admit I had a lot of fun with this project, and I hope you liked it and found it entertaining, and stay tuned for more fun and random videos. And as always, 